Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our first lesson from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Before the sermon, I'll just reread the last verse of our text. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. So far, God's word. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who promised to never leave us or forsake us, your Christian friends. I think we've probably all had it happen that we were engaged in a conversation with somebody and not too long into that conversation we realized that we weren't actually doing any of the talking. It was just the other person doing all of the talking. That can be somewhat difficult, but then on the other hand, maybe we've been on the exact opposite side of that equation, and we've been the ones doing all the talking, and everyone just had to listen to us. Which is not to say that talking isn't a worthwhile skill. It certainly is. It's very good to be able to communicate what you're thinking in in words that can be clearly understood by people. But it isn't as important a skill as listening is. And unfortunately, I think it's safe to say that listening is a skill that seems to develop later, after the skill of talking develops. It shouldn't really be that way. Listening is physically very easy. It doesn't require a whole lot of energy. And yet, sometimes, I think we all find it hard to sit back and just listen when something that perhaps someone else says prompts in our mind something that we feel we need to talk about right away. The same is true in our relationship with our God. We have all sorts of things on our minds. We have all sorts of things going on in our lives. And when we talk about how we would like God to deal with with us in our lives, more often than not, we're thinking about how what God does pertains to this earthly life. But God has something he wants to talk to you about. And whatever it is that's on your minds at any given time, whatever it is that's going on in your life that you'd like to talk to God about, it is safe to say as well that what God has to say to you is more important than what you have to say to God. It then is important to develop listening skills when it comes to God's word. Like students that get a summons into the principal's office. That's never happened to anyone here, has it? Been called into the principal's office? God has something he wants to talk to you about. And we might wonder, well, is this going to be something good? Is it going to be something bad? Are we in trouble? Well, we're not going to know unless we listen. So let's listen. We encounter the prophet Samuel in our text as a young boy. Samuel is such an interesting little boy. In the chapters immediately before our text, we see that he was given to his mother Hannah as a special gift from God. And recognizing him as a special gift, Hannah gave him back to God, brought him as a little boy to the house of God to minister before God. And there's the very touching little story of Hannah then going to visit Samuel once per year and bring along a new set of clothes for him that she had made. That was Samuel's life. Now Samuel's in our text. And he hears someone calling out in the middle of the night, Samuel, and the only other person there is Eli, the high priest for whom he works. So you have that funny little exchange in our text of Samuel hearing someone calling him and running to Eli, and Eli keeps sending him back, saying, I didn't call you, go back to bed, kid. Until Eli realizes that this is God coming. And and then in in verse 7, you've got that interesting little statement Samuel did not yet know the Lord. That's amazing when you think about it. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He lived in the house of God. 
He spent his entire day doing religious things, helping out people when they would bring their sacrifices and so on, but God was still a stranger to him. He didn't know God. He'd heard of God. He knew there was a God, but he didn't really know him. And why? Verse 1 explains why. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. God had taken his word for the most part away from his people. God was a stranger to Samuel. Just as today, God is a stranger to so many people. They know the term God. They've heard the name Jesus. But so many people, even people that we know, don't really know God. Part of my job is sometimes to talk to people who have been straying from church, straying from God. And when I have those conversations, I almost always hear something along these lines. But I'm praying all the time. And I'll be honest, there's a part of me that wants to say, yeah, right, sure you are. But absent any evidence that I can point to, I have to take people at their word. Okay, they're praying all the time. But is praying the same as listening? Does God come to people through prayer? Don't get me wrong, prayer is a wonderful blessing of God, a fantastic gift that he's given us. And I can't speak for you, but I know I should be praying much more than I do. It's that important. And yet, prayer is not how God comes to people. Prayer is not how God reveals himself. Prayer is not how Jesus Christ is unveiled as the Savior of the world. That comes, as the Apostle Paul says, from hearing, from listening. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Prayer is us going to God and talking to him about everything that we feel we need to talk about. And that's good. It's right that we do that. But at the same time, many of our prayers are often a lot about us. A lot about what we want. God wants to talk to you about something. And what he has to say is more important than what you have to say to him. Faith comes from hearing the message. It isn't a matter of talking to God so much as it is a matter of listening to God. And when we listen to God, God blesses us. Did you see in our gospel reading how God blessed Nathaniel through his listening? Philip had come to Nathaniel and said, We found the guy who is the Messiah. And, and then Nathaniel said, Oh, where is he from? Nazareth! Nah, nothing good can come from Nazareth. And he was ready to write Jesus off there and then because he came from Nazareth. But then he heard Jesus. He listened just a little bit to Jesus. And that changed everything for Nathaniel. As Jesus revealed that he was able to see Nathaniel under the fig tree before Philip had even come to him. And Nathaniel knew that that supernatural power could only have come from God, and he confessed right there on the spot that Jesus was God and Lord. Listening meant that Nathaniel became a believer in Jesus and became a disciple for the rest of his life. Isn't it amazing that this wonderful knowledge comes to us just through listening? Not by taking a class not by doing some fantastic thing, but the most important knowledge that we can have is simply imparted to us by God when we listen to him. Were you listening to what God told you when you came into church? That he loves you through, through, the, through the songs that we sing? That he's called you to be his disciple? Are you going to listen when God tells you in a few minutes, after you confess your sins to him, that he loves you so much he has forgiven all of your sins through Jesus? Are you going to listen as Jesus' very bread, very body and blood is imparted to you, and he says, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. 
You know, so often in church we use the same words over and over again, and, and they can fly right past us and lose their meaning. So it's good that God says some of these same things again and again to us, so maybe at least once during the course of a service, we're going to catch what God is saying to us. You know, when we are involved in one of those seemingly one-sided conversations where the other person is doing all of the talking, sometimes it just might come to pass that we have something that we feel we really need to say. And if that's the case, then we have to do something that might come across as being just a bit rude. We might have to interrupt that other person talking. Hold up our hand and say, uh, okay, you've had your turn. I have to say something now. If what we have to say is truly that important, then that's what we have to do. Isn't that sometimes what God does to us? Sometimes God interrupts our lives, brings things into our lives, brings unpleasant situations into our lives because we need to be interrupted. Now, that is not to say that I can tell or you can tell every time that something goes wrong in your life, it's because you haven't been listening enough to God and he needs to interrupt you. But it might be the case. It sometimes is the case. And sometimes we are so self-centered and worldly-centered that we need that interruption. Where God says, hang on, I have something I want to talk to you about. God interrupted Samuel's sleep, interrupted Eli's life, because he had something that he had to tell them. The verses after our text tell us what it was that God had to tell Samuel. And it wasn't a very pleasant message. It was a message about Eli, the high priest that Samuel worked for. Eli hadn't been a very good father, hadn't been a very good religious leader. God said, Samuel, go tell your boss Eli he's going to die. And he did. To his credit, Eli took the news pretty well. He said, well, if that's what God says, I, I'm sure I deserve it. God is not going to come to you in the middle of the night and wake you up and give you some important mission that people are going to be talking about thousands of years from now. I think it's safe to say that. But God does call you to be his servant, as he called Samuel to be his servant. What does that consist of? Well, the way the world looks at it, it's a whole series of mundane things. Things that just have to do with our everyday lives and how we live them. If you're a husband, God has called you to love your wife and be an example for other men in how you will love your wife. If God has called you to be a wife, he, then he has called you in that vocation to love your husband and be an example to other women and how you love your husband. If your parents are still alive, God calls you to honor and respect them. And if you're still living in their house, to obey them. If you're still in school, God calls you to do your schoolwork to the best of your abilities. If you are an employee, God calls you to work for your employer as hard as you would work as if God himself were your employer. And if you are an employer yourself, God calls you to treat your employees with fairness and justice. And then God calls all of us to deal with those whom he brings into our lives in a loving way so that we be the ones to deal charitably with someone. We be the ones to speak kind and comforting words to people who need to hear them. That we be the ones who talk to people with smiles on our faces to show them that, yes, somebody does love them. And no, these aren't great and noble things God calls us to do all the time. God doesn't call us to lead armies. God doesn't call us to judge nations. But at the same time, we sell God short if we say that what he calls us to do isn't important because it truly is important. It's to you and it's to me that God gives that great commission to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations. And if that's not important, then what truly is Listening to God. Hearing him when he calls. He tells us, he tells each of us that he has given us spiritual gifts. Important gifts that we are to use in his service. 
And you and you alone can, dis can figure out for yourself what spiritual gifts God has given you that he means for you to use in his service. Hear him when he calls you. It's one thing, I suppose, to be involved in a conversation that's kind of one-sided. It's even worse if you're talking to someone and all of a sudden their cell phone rings and without acknowledging you, they just answer, start talking away, maybe even wander away from you. And you're like, what in the world just happened here? It's happened to me before. Maybe it's happened to you too. <laughs> I was actually counseling someone one time. Their cell phone rang, they answered and just walked out of my office like, what am I doing here then? But I suppose there's this whole new system of etiquette that we have to uh, devise in our society when it comes to cell phones because we're, everyone is available all the time to anybody. I wonder if sometimes we don't treat our God the same way. He has something he wants to talk to us about. And there's so much else out there that can distract us. Let us hear him when he calls us. Let us listen to him when he's talking to us. Because he wants to talk, about, talk to us about our eternal comfort and well-being. He wants to talk to us about what we're to do here in this world while we're waiting for eternity to begin. And then he gives us the privilege of talking to other people who are so easily distracted in this world, who have all sorts of things running around in their heads, so that they too hear the one voice that truly ma matters and gain the salvation that their Savior won for them too. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.